You know, this industry needs some help. It has for a long time. And one of the best ways you can help, those of you who are travel evolved trained travelers, is you can mentor a new traveler, someone that hasn't even started the learning curve or even gone through remotely any of the ropes that you guys know. We're going to talk about mentoring on this week's edition of Travel Evolved and talk about how this can improve not only your own personal feeling about you know being a traveling healthcare professional, but also the entire industry in itself. This is, in a nutshell, one of the things I think is really lacking in this industry. And mentoring is going to improve everybody's quality and the entire industry in general. We'll talk about it this week on Travel Evolved. This is Travel Evolved. Welcome, everybody. I don't know why I do this sometimes. I do the the reporter paper shuffle. It's it's shuffle. It's it's I don't know. Just if it's off, it's not important. Welcome to the episode, everybody. So we took a little break, as you guys probably know. Um, it's just the holidays were here, are here, and uh, it just has been it's been really tough. Um, my company's really taken off, and it's been difficult. I'm just, I just, I'm, I'm burnt out. I'm whipped out when I get back. And, and unfortunately, I've always said this is a, this is a bonus thing I want to keep doing, and I, and I am going to keep doing it. But it's been really tough sometimes because we've just, we want to catch the tiger by the tail, so to speak. And it does mean literally sometimes 12, 13, 14 hour days, which I know sounds crazy, but that's some of us have been doing that because it's what's, it's what's there, and it's, it's what travelers are looking for and need right now. So that means. Um, we've got to we've got to make sure we're, we're doing the real job. <laughs> so, unfortunately, travel evolves sometimes takes a back seat. I, I did say let's get back to what we were doing when I used to do Travel Insiders, and that is let's start to record a few of these uh, more frequently. Now we can't tonight, but let's try to get you know <clears throat> a week or two with the with the holidays still in full bloom. There should be some time for us to get uh, some, some of our guests we want to get programmed here and get some new things popping out and be able to get some good cadence back like we had with this. Um, it just, it's just been tough, but we are very, very committed. It's been very frustrating, and I'm getting a little bit you know testy sometimes about we got to get this going, but it's me. I'm just going to throw it out there. I have no one to point the finger to that has been um, having the difficulty trying to find the time to get these things out. So that's my public service announcement as to... Uh, well, I hope you guys enjoyed a break from me. <laughs> Maybe um, I certainly have enjoyed, like I said, the time uh, the time away, and I appreciate it. We haven't really taken a break in a year and a half um, on any of these, and so it was nice to have that. So let's get some ho- let's get the housekeeping thing done again. Lots of things to talk about. First and foremost, I do want to direct people to our Facebook group, Travel Evolved. We are pushing that group pretty heavily. I I just. Here's why. I think that Facebook groups anymore have become kind of a joke. I'm just going to say it. And I don't mean to offend anybody out there who owns one. But what's happened now is these have become strictly meme posting job sites. And it is not effective. It's not efficient. And some of these owners of these groups are a little overzealous. Let's say the the last, uh, let's say it like it is. About it has to be this cookie cutter model. We're going to kick you off. There's no room for anybody to make suggestions or throw something a little bit unusual out there. Besides a here's my job in St. Louis, Missouri, and here's the pay rate and everything else. It's I mean that's what the Facebook has kind of become. So with Travel Evolved, our Facebook group, we are pushing hard because I really want that to be kind of a go-to where you say, hey, listen, I got a wild, wacky question that I want either some of my peers to answer. Or Mark, maybe you or somebody else that might be, you know, in. I've got, listen, I've got competitors that, that are on that page. I've got recruiters that are on that page. 
So throw it all out there. And that's the idea. We really want to push that because I think unlike all these other groups, it's an avenue and opportunity for you guys to ask some tough questions. Now, I've also said, I think we're still doing it. I don't think, I know we are. We are still going live on that Facebook group, Travel Evolve, twice a week. And they were doing it at 8 o'clock Eastern time on Mondays and Thursdays, which means 5 o'clock Pacific or 6 o'clock where I'm in Denver right now currently. We're talking about Travel Evolve. We, we have a theme and a topic for the night. What we've been doing on Mondays is going back and talking about the episodes that we've already recorded over a year ago and kind of talking about why we recorded them and, and getting some people to potentially remember those episodes and going back and, and maybe re-listening to them or listening to them for the first time. I do know we have a lot of travelers that just pick up with a brand new episode. And I've always said, and I'll continue to say, we covered some incredibly important things early on, specifically and purposefully, so that we could kind of walk you guys through. And again, it's not that you're not knowledgeable or not, you know, don't know what you're doing, but to walk you through some of the things that are on the agency side of things and, and mostly really to give you guys an idea of the terminology and the way that I talk and, and what I refer to as things. Um, because I think that's important so that you guys understand. If you start listening to an episode right now, you're going to be like, what the hell is this guy talking about? So go back and listen to some of those. And on, on Monday night, we really specifically talk about here is what, um, what we're thinking on this episode and here's why we, we did it. And uh, again, we opened it up to the group to kind of get some comments and that sort of thing. On Thursdays, we've been going through with the more recent one. So very quickly after we release this one, whenever that's going to be, when the team gets done editing it, we're going to go ahead and talk about mentoring on that on that Thursday night. So I would really want to I really want to push you guys to join that. I, I do think you have to be approved, but everyone's being approved. So just jump on and join, and then join me on those uh, Mondays and Thursday nights. And again, if you think that I'm transparent here fire away a question at me. Now, there really isn't anything that we can't talk about. I may not know the answer to something you fire at me, but it oftentimes will lead to a great discussion, either between you and I or some other travelers, potentially a podcast episode, potentially you guesting on a podcast episode. So anyway, I'm going to push that. The, the, uh, wow, I can't even talk again. I think again, the Facebook group is where you said that we got the, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little slappy tonight. Obviously, the podcast, the YouTube channel, both still are... In, we, we've had a real big bump on both of those. I don't know if it's because we took time off and maybe you guys had a chance to uh, to kind of catch up. Or um, I know we're pushing it. I know we're pushing it on TikTok. I know we're pushing it on, on all the different things I just mentioned because, you know, I think, and I'll say this again, with, with next-gen med staff... I believe that the smarter and more knowledgeable a traveler is, the better it is for me because I don't have to educate them on things that, that I want them to know. The difference between me and everybody else is that most people in my position don't want you to know. They want you to just look at your offer and go, okay, I'm just going to sign away. And then I guess just deal with questions and things about hours 36 to 40 and call back and guaranteeing hours as, as they go through. It's bizarre to me, but I also, you know, like I said a couple of episodes ago, I also heavily believe that this industry is in need of a kick in the pants. We're going to talk about it a little bit more at the end of the episode, but we're doing things so inefficiently and have been for a long time. And we have the technology and the ability for you guys to be able to get jobs quicker, faster than anybody else. And right now, I'll just throw it out there. If you're using the Next Gen MedStaff app, you're going to be able to get in front of positions before everybody else and everybody else's recruiter even starts proposing the offer to them. And here's what we're going to pay. And you can see it right there. So, all right, time out. I'm not going to. I'm not going to talk about that right now. Let's get back to mentoring, and we'll talk about that toward the end. All right, here's what I'm going to say. The industry, in my opinion, like I just said, needs stronger and stronger travelers. I just believe we do. Part of the problem that happened during the pandemic, and especially in you know in in 2021, all the way into the early part of 2022. As you guys know, there was a ton of people that jumped into travel from every avenue, from allied and nursing and every way, shape, and, and form in between. Because it was almost hard to resist. They're working alongside of travelers coming into their facility and going, wait a minute, I'm living, they're making five times as much money as I am. This is crazy. I'm going to go leave and do the same thing. So what happened is the industry kind of got saturated with brand new travelers, very smart men and women who understand healthcare, but they didn't understand the travel industry, which means there was a lot of people flying around with misinformation that, that had unrealistic expectations that you guys know you went, you were forced to work alongside of and think back a year and a half, two years ago, did you ever work alongside of somebody? You're like, oh my gosh, this person is causing me 
a lot more work, a lot more anxiety, a lot more issues. I'm nervous because they don't know how to be a traveler. So I do believe that mentoring somebody is an amazingly strong way for you guys to fix that. So we can talk about, and we will today, just mentoring somebody that's right there on your unit, on your floor. How do you get someone to understand, you know, being a traveler and getting through that learning curve? That's really what the whole point about this is, is that we hope Travel Evolve gets you guys through the learning curve. There are ways in which you can help people get through their own personal learning curve as a traveler. Take them aside, especially if you like the person. If the person's a good-hearted person and you generally care about them, after hours, days you're off, maybe even on break, start to mentor them on the things that you made mistakes on. And raise your hand if you didn't make any mistakes or if you're still not, right? I make one every hour, I swear. I definitely make mistakes every day. But I'm learning. I'm trying to make sure that I don't make the same mistake twice, which what you guys are trying to do. This is an opportunity for you to just try to make someone not make a mistake that you've made that could be really costly to them. Like I said, it could actually come back and, and, and be, a, be something that affects you personally. I don't care if we're talking about how to secure housing, how to understand and read a read a, an offer and a contract, things about insurance, whether it's you know malpractice. We're going to talk about that here in a few episodes. Personal health insurance, how to juggle agencies, how to juggle recruiters. If you're still in that mindset where you like to work with you know five or ten different people and and have them give you a position, all the things that you've learned, how to really be aware during an interview, how to really pay attention to some of the un not unknown, but kind of the things you're kind of hearing when you're interviewing with that, that manager about, ooh, that doesn't sound good. There's some floating potential. Or maybe we're not going to quite adhere to the schedule that we're talking about here now. You guys have learned these sorts of things, and I think it's definitely an opportunity for you guys to build and make stronger and tra stronger travelers. The point I kind of want to talk about here, and I'll just bring it up now, and this is kind of the jux of the whole episode, is that the stronger the traveling pool is. In other words, the people like you, or the, if you're considering, and hopefully the people that are already out there, the better you guys are as a conglomerate. The more knowledgeable, the more practiced, the more aware of everything from agency to, to the facility that you have your guard up and you're prepared and understand and protected and know how to react, the more, in my opinion, that both agency and hospitals are going to have to increase their opportunities with you and for you, if that makes sense. In other words, hospitals where the managers who are interviewing you are not being forthright, they're misleading on, on purpose. I understand things do come up and things change, but we all have had times when you guys have interviewed and you're like, man, this person is, is when you get there, this is not what I signed up for. I had a couple the other day that were you know, communicating with us that said, I'm going to sign right now and I'm miserable. I may have even referenced that on maybe one of the lives that I did on our Facebook. This stuff happens. As you guys start to elevate your game, think about this down the road. Two or three years down the road, if everybody or more and more travelers had their guard up and knew this particular unit in this hospital is an issue, no one's going to want to go there, which means they're going to have to start to settle for the ones that aren't educated, which means they're going to have to fix that unit. Full-on hospitals that are notoriously poorly ran, and you guys know who they are. In other words, you just look on, on all these Facebook groups that talk about you know beating up facilities. It's pretty obvious. And by the way, they're the same names I've seen for over 20 years. They still haven't changed it. If you guys learned and started to communicate with other travelers and started to mentor them about don't go to XYZ Hospital. You're going to hate it. It's going to be horrible. Here's the reasons why. Eventually, no one's going to want to be submitted, and their quality of what they're looking at potentially for their interviewing and, and offering process is going to start to decrease you know, drastically. They're going to have to fix it. Somebody at the top level is going to say, why are we having so much trouble with getting our travelers here? You guys love to talk about how to mentor people on not accepting low-paying assignments, and I've, had, I've given you guys my two cents worth on that. I don't think it's ever going to change. You're going to get somebody that will. But the better quality of candidate that, that doesn't go after those low, you know, those really low paying or, or horrible assignments, it's going to elevate that facility. Same thing applies with agencies. I don't even need to go into this, but obviously, if we're talking about agencies that don't pay properly for hours 36 to 40, don't pay properly for overtime, callback, and holiday, that don't gosh, I don't know, do your tax advantage correctly, don't have the insurance information that you're looking for, whether it's you want day one and they don't offer till later, or all the different lists of things you guys have, 
if you stopped working for them, and I mean, again, the most obvious to me typically is the pay rate. You guys know I'm big on that because I think it's ridiculous that we all have the same pay package. I'm sorry. Yeah, the same. We all have the same bill rate, and we offer thousands or hundreds of you know, hundreds of different pay packages based upon the same bill rate that most of us see. I think is the fundamental ridiculousness in our industry, and that's what we're always trying to do. These all these these agencies are out there trying to convince you to take the same job for all these different rates and reasons and I, it, it cannot be easy it cannot be easy for you guys so here's what i'll tell you most agencies absolutely still to this day and this is obviously being recorded well it's going to be released i think in before christmas I'm not sure when before christmas depending on how long of a break everyone's taking but it's going to be released before christmas so here at the end of 2022 almost to 2023 most agencies are still heavily dependent upon traveler ignorance. Just today, booked uh, book somebody that's going to go down, and she's a listener, so I won't mention your name. But we booked somebody, and it happened to be that you know she's listened to us a little bit, but I do talk quick. I get it, but it happened to be that we hadn't really, she didn't really quite understand the whole. 36 to 40 and why all of your income should be given to you and just be taxed properly and fully on it and nothing should be tax free but they should at least be offering the portion of your income that is is tax free for our 0 to 36 they should be adding that to your total compensation and taxing you on all of it because you know it's your money you want to pay those taxes to the government they want that money but the difference in what they're not giving you is they're still keeping net dollars that you would have on your paycheck and you'd be paying taxes appropriately. So it kills, it wins everything, but still didn't understand kind of that whole concept. So it's, it was nice enough for an opportunity to be able to kind of walk through, through that. But there are still a ton of agencies that are relying upon that, that um, lack of ignorance. I, like I say, I think I'm the only person I've ever seen ever to this day, as I'm recording this, that has openly talked about the fallacy of why that our zero, I'm sorry, hours 36 to 40 is so ridiculous and why it is a built-in margin increaser for a lot of agencies that they count on. It doesn't matter if you're working a 15-minute, you know, 36.25 hours, that's extra money for them. And my question, again, this is why I'm going back on, on why they rely upon ignorance is, why, if it's more hours than the agency is anticipating when they're quoting you a rate at the beginning of an assignment before you've even worked the first hour, that's that's an extra 15 minutes that they didn't think they were going to get from you. Why is that margin bigger than every other hour that you're working? It shouldn't be. It should be significantly less because it's free money. It's bonus money. It should be more of it going into your pocket. But Again, this is this is the thing that drives me crazy. Very interesting. I don't know how else to scream this from the top of my lungs. I'm hoping that more of you share what we're doing here and our our Facebook group and the podcast, the YouTube channel, everything else that we're doing because it's important. It's not just about an app. It's not just about speed in which you can see jobs. It's about being paid properly. So, going back to my original thing, agencies still to this day rely upon ignorance and. It's a lot of it has to do with the fact that there's always a brand new traveler coming in and calling that agency up that is either on their first, second, third, fourth assignment. You'll notice, for those of you guys that are veteran travelers, you guys are really starting to get savvy with what we're talking about here, it is way more difficult for a recruiter to tap dance around your legitimate questions, which is what we want to have happen. We I want you to make them go, uh, I don't know, I don't understand this. I want you to be more knowledgeable about compensation than your recruiter is. That gives you an amazing edge on negotiating the proper way to be paid. If you know more about what I'm talking about and you truly grasp and relearn this, if I make mistakes talking, you've gone back and you've you've understood this, you're going to get paid better by every agency, not just mine. Every single agency out there is going to go, well, I guess we, I guess, you know, they, they caught us. We're going to have to figure out how to rewrite this contract and pay someone properly. So they're relying upon that. There is, and I'm, I'm going to jump into the new topic that I, that I put down here because I, I, I'm kind of beating some stuff up and I want to get really focused on this. I do know that I went back and talked a lot about traveler marketability. We had to did a whole episode on traveler marketability. And I said very specifically there that you are competing against every single other traveler that's watching this episode. I meant that. That is not to take away from what I'm trying to say now. Please don't not want to help a fellow traveler. 
because you're worried about the competition level. You guys know so much more than somebody brand new that hasn't been watching us for a long time or to something that's, been, that's brand new in, in travel in general. There is plenty of room not to hurt your own personal marketability by taking someone aside while you're on assignment or someone that you know or someone in a Facebook group and saying, hey, let me tell you what the real, the real skinny is on this thing because it's important. It isn't going to change your ability to get a job, but it will potentially change somebody else or even your ability to be able to have a better assignment because the people and the travelers that they're surrounded with have a higher and heightened ability as a traveler. They understand it. they're not grouchy. They're not looking like a deer in the headlights. They're not going home crying. They're not in the unit crying because they didn't understand what this world is about. You're teaching them. And that's what I think mentoring is really, really all about. So what are some of the things you can mentor on? I think first and foremost, it's, it's, it's about pay rates, which also includes bill rates. I already talked about it, so I'm not going to continue beating that up. But I do believe that understanding how us agencies bill for you hourly how we carve out potentially, if there is one, if there's not a direct contract, a little small, typically 5% vendor fee of that bill rate. Let's say it's 100 bucks. So five bucks is gone. That goes to the vendor. So we've got $95 left. Understanding of that $95, here's what an agency typically is going to want to have for their particular margin. And we know it's high right now, and I think it's way too high, especially based upon technology. Yes, if you've got a team of recruiters that cost you a couple of million dollars a year, literally, with salaries, commission, benefits, training, hiring, firing, even a, just a medium-sized company has millions of dollars of internal salary costs. Why do you think they need to have these huge margins? Why do you think they need to make that much money? To pay for those people who are sitting there calling, 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 pushing, texting, posting, all the different other mechanisms that they're using to convince you to go to work for them. If that's eliminated, then you should be making a lot more money. All these companies out there that have apps that aren't offering more money, it's just a faster way to recruit you. They, they've got the app, but it doesn't have the benefit that you're looking for. But it still, it still gets you there quicker, so we'll talk about that. Bill rates, pay rates, that's the most important thing, in my personal opinion, that you can help another traveler understand. They should understand how it is that their agency is being compensated for every hour that they're working at. We've already done a bunch of episodes. There's a whole bunch, actually more still to come, that's going to really break down bill rates. But also the pay rates, like I just talked about, understanding the hours 36 to 40, understanding overtime, understanding you know, call back and being on call, guaranteed hours, how that all works. I did an unbillable BS one a few weeks ago. That's important, too, to say here's what an agency probably cannot do. All the things that we talk about, this is, in my opinion, the number one area where you guys can make a big, big difference in another nubile type traveler's life and get them through that portion. If, if they have that portion, they have so many feathers in their caps that allows them to negotiate and to question some of the stuff that's being thrust upon them by agencies and by recruiters that, and let's be honest, barely know you. And some of them may have only been doing this for months, let alone maybe a year or two. That's, that's the majority of what we see out there. So you're going to know more, and if you teach somebody else and mention them how to understand bill rates, I think that's the first and foremost thing that you should be focusing on, in my opinion. Next thing, I'm just going to start rattling these off on a list. The next thing, in my opinion, is absolutely, I'm going to fix this camera because I think it got moved. Hopefully it doesn't blur everything up. I don't know. The team likes to have the whole logo in there so for marketing purposes, but I, it feels like I'm doing this. I don't the second most important thing is tax information. Again, here is where I'm going to urge, urge, urge you to go to a professional. Don't necessarily listen to me. I am not capable, nor am I allowed to, nor should I be giving any kind of tax advice to anybody. But I do believe that what's super important is that you understand and help to mentor somebody else. It is, I think it's the second most important thing besides, it's all about money for me because I think that's, there's obviously some clinical, and we'll talk about that here in a minute, there's some clinical things that I think are really important. But from a traveler standpoint, yes, the top two things, in my opinion, are understanding compensation, bill rates, pay rates, and then understanding how taxes work. What happens if I stay in assignment longer than a year? Am I still allowed to take you know, everything that meals and sales tax-free? What's the radius rule? What am I allowed to take? Talk to a CPA. Please go to a CPA. Spend a couple of extra bucks. It's not that much more expensive to get really good professional advice from a certified public accountant who can answer these questions very effectively, can talk about multi-state jurisdiction type questions that you're going to have as a healthcare traveler. When you know this, which I hope most of you do already, 
please share this information. Again, don't give out tax advice yourself, but tell them what you know. Have them qualify and verify that with their own CPA. And I think one of the first things you should teach everyone else is to get a CPA. If you're going to, I mean, there's just, there's too many dollars at stake. You don't, you're, you've got so much oftentimes that are tax free. You don't want to push the envelope and take too many deductions that are going to get you into hot water. There's, there's rules and things that you want to adhere to. And a, and a certified public account is going to help you make sure that you're making those decisions perfectly. Don't do your own taxes. Don't go into a, you know, a, a pop-up type place that comes around every tax season and is gone again for eight months or nine months. Go to professional. Learn and help mentor your fellow traveler about tax information. I think it's incredibly important. Let's talk about clinical stuff. Obviously, it, it's going to be a short topic for me because I can't really, and not can't really, I absolutely cannot talk intelligently about the clinical aspects. But clearly, we talked about traveler wisdom on an episode previously. Uh, I think we have. I hope we've done that episode. <laughs> Sometimes I get really confused. It's on the list if we have it. This is the idea that as a traveler, and as you go from hospital to hospital to hospital, obviously in your particular unit, I know some of you float to a number of different units, but most of you guys are working in one unit under one specialty, which means that every time you go to an assignment, you are now learning something hopefully beneficial that you learned from that particular facility in that particular unit, whether it's a coworker, a manager, or just a process or procedure that they did. I don't care if it's something as simple as scheduling or something that's really specific that is that is nitty gritty down to your particular specialty as you travel more and more and more you're going to learn things now again i've oftentimes said i think i said in traveler market and in, in the uh, the episode if i've done it is that you got to be careful how you bring this up it's not this is not this is about mentoring this is not about telling the unit manager or or you know the director of nursing how you think things should be done i mean you're certainly welcome to but we all know how that's going to go over oftentimes it is about pulling a traveler aside and helping him or her and saying, hey, this is, I just I found this to be helpful. I'm, I'm not trying to overset my bounds, but maybe you will too. There are so many things that we could go over and so many different examples, but I think you guys get the gist of what I'm saying. This is, a, again, you've got, as time goes by, more and more ideas, more and more things that you've experienced, more and more processes that you've gone through from every single assignment. And you've, you've also learned, by the way, the things that are bad. And I think that's just as important. Things that don't work, things that are, you know, again, I don't care if we're talking, <laughs> charting, all the different things we're looking at, every nuance, you're getting stronger and stronger. And I, I, I believe wholeheartedly from a non travel evolved aspect, because I can't, like I said, I can't speak intelligently about this. This is a huge area that I think absolutely affects your ability to have a better team around you as a traveler, which means if you're doing it and 20 of your other friends out there that are watching this too, or a couple of hundred that are watching this are going to say, yeah, I could do this too. The next time you see someone struggling and you've got an idea, obviously figure out a great way to approach the, approach that individual. But I, I think it's always like, listen, I, I, I've got a suggestion. I don't know if it'll be something you'd like to, to try, but here's what I found worked for me and you can take it or leave it. I mean, those kinds of, of, of I guess, pitches to that seem to work pretty well. And I think you guys can, this is where I think you can elevate the game because really what I'm trying to do also in this episode is you want to be around other travelers that know as much or are just as strong and just as good as you are. So obviously the clinical aspect is is huge. I wrote down here figuring out the small stuff. And what I mean by that is all the little episodes that we do that you guys can talk so much more intelligently than I can about. I don't care if it's what to bring, how to have your resume ready, how to get the job, the traveler marketability, how to experience great things on the way to the assignment, what to do while you're on the assignment. How to, you know, how to make sure that you're not missing your friends at home and how to keep relationships going, the things to be aware of about relationships that we've done early on. All these little things are all part of it. And again, I think this comes back down to experience. The more experienced you are, it kind of goes along with that traveler wisdom. You're going to be able to help some other people with everything by literally saying, here's how I find my next assignment. Here's how I work with, you know, here's how I do my taxes. Here's how I look at and compare different assignments that are the same assignment with different agencies. I mean, everything that you guys have learned, everything that you're learning, it's an opportunity to help another traveler. I mean, don't you wish someone would have done that for you when you started? Hopefully, you know, maybe it's many years ago, maybe it's relatively recent. The mistakes that you've made that cost you especially money, potentially a whole assignment, potentially the ability to work with a great agency that you really like, potentially the ability to be able to um, you know, be more marketable, 
or just flat out getting getting terminated or having to having to not be able to take an assignment because you weren't prepared. All those things that you learn the hard way help somebody else. I'm just I'm. This is one of those episodes. I just I'm begging you, imploring you to just help somebody else get to where you were. You know, get to where you 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 want to be. The industry is going to benefit from this higher and higher educated travelers. Here's what I will tell you. I believe, in, and this is where it's going to come full circle. I don't want to keep going over things, but bill rates would start to increase if travelers started demanding more from their agencies. The first thing that's going to happen, the agency is not going to change their, their 25 or 30 year philosophy or even their 10 year philosophy. We all know that. If you're not going to them because their margin is so thick and they're not getting, you know, they're not giving fulfillment to the facility. The first thing they're going to try to do is get the facility to pay higher. Also, naturally, like I said earlier, the the poor hospitals. And I mean by poor, I'm saying the hospitals that are poorly ran. Those facilities are going to have to start to increase their bill rate higher and higher. I mean, I've told you this before. There's there's I don't have a problem with you guys taking an assignment, not that it's any of my business, for at a really horrible facility if it pays ridiculous amounts that's that's you guys i just wouldn't take one that doesn't at a horrible facility that doesn't pay very very well and i always would tell you to pay you know go with the agency that pays the most but there's nothing wrong there's no judgment for me if you guys take a really difficult assignment at a hospital that is known for not having their act together and hasn't for years but if the rate makes sense and it's what works for you right now that's what i love about being your own recruiter and, and knowing what you want it's not, you know, you're not relying upon somebody you barely know to, to give you advice. You know, you've got the advice. And for you in this particular case, that might make all the sense in the world. You may have to get out of debt. You may have a, you know, may need to make some more money for the holidays. You may have a, a student that's going into college now, and that's why you're traveling. And you want to make sure that, hey, I, I can deal with some stuff because I'm not the average traveler. This is my purpose and my reason for, for you know, for traveling. So, I do believe, again, the more mentoring that's going on, the more knowledge that's being pushed through all travelers, the higher those bill rates are going to become, which I, which then should mean, should mean, doesn't always, that the pay rates would start getting higher. That's going to be the next thing. It's going to be where agencies are going to have to start figuring out on their own how to start to decrease their margins. I have figured out how to do it on my own before anything was created out of thin air. I said, this is how we're going to do this because it's important to me to be the top paying company out there. Other companies are not going to want to keep continually getting beat by more and more and more agencies for the same position. They're gonna have to start to figure out how to evolve their own process. That's why I said a few episodes ago, I, I am convinced, I don't believe I'm wrong. I could be wrong a lot. I just said I make mistakes every day. But like I've said it many times, in, in five years, so in other words, if we are at the end of 2027 and we're coming around the holidays and most companies aren't using some form of recruiterless option, whether it's an app or something new that's coming out, I, I'm dead wrong. And in this, this episode, I'm hoping, will still be sitting out there in five years on YouTube and on podcasts and people can be snickering and they're going to go, you know what, the guy was right. Because it has to come down to how can an agency pay more and cut their costs less? Well, there's one big area, one big way they can do that, and we're doing it. And so are a handful of other companies, and more and more will. I just mark my words, they will, which means regardless of bill rates, I foresee percentages of the pay rate, in other words, percentage of the bill rate going to the traveler increasing. Again, it doesn't sound like a lot, but if you just take 10% of a 30%, if you, if you cut agencies' fees out by one-third, that's an incredible amount of money. That's ten dollars, fifteen dollars an hour going to you. And I don't have my calculator with me, but we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars gross yearly in a traveler's pockets. Tens of thousands of dollars. Bill rate staying the same. So that's gonna, I think, gonna absolutely happen for sure. Companies are gonna have to start to figure out again with proper mentoring. They're gonna start figuring out how to get back to paying people properly for hours 36 to 40 if you're one of those folks that do work on a 12-hour shift and how to calculate a true time and a half of all your compensation not just the taxable portion for callback holiday and overtime it's going to start happening i still don't know of many companies or any companies that i know of that do it the right way but i believe in my heart that more mentoring more knowledge more sharing of what we're doing is going to start to cause more people to go i got to be competitive what if two companies have the exact same compensation package, 
but one company is actually paying you roughly $12 more an hour for hours 36 to 40 and taxing you on that $12 an hour, which means you're probably talking about an $8 an hour difference. And they're using that $12 an hour for overtime, which means it's now you know $18 an hour more. You're going to take that company. I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't. So you're going to start choosing a company based upon their pay policies and how uh, how they're not right and how they're not fair and how it's all bonus money that agencies should be taking thinner margins on and not thicker margins. You're going to force the hand. Mentoring, mentoring, mentoring is going to do this for you guys. So anyway, the more travelers that focus on knowledge and mentor each other, I believe, and again, this is that episode, first and foremost, it's just going to make you feel better, guys and gals. You just will. If you can help somebody, I, I just think for those of you that are kind-hearted, most of you guys are. That's why you got into healthcare. Most of you want to help people anyway. If you can help a fellow traveler turn that corner and, and have some of the, the clouds part and you know, like that aha moment that I always talk about, oh, now I understand why I have to be careful about my tax-free stipends when I've been to a facility you know, close to a year and, and what I'm going to do and, and how that whole tax works from my tax home to here. Oh, now I understand about how an agency makes money and their bill rates, what they can and what they can't charge for, all those things. It's going to start to elevate and evolve the entire travel health care better and faster. It just absolutely is. All right, let me, let me change gears for a little bit. I promise you guys I'm going to talk a little bit more about the app and some sort of other things. Listen, I said, and I started to, in this summer, we kept continuing on with kind of a, a history of where we are and, and how I got to where I'm at. And, and again, not, I'm kind of tired of talking about it, to be honest with you. So I'm going to jump ahead. We're going to go back. Um, just in, the, in a few short months, we're actually going to start to relive three years ago, which I'm super excited about. Like I've told many of you, and many times if you haven't heard this already, that I've recorded like, a half an hour's worth of thoughts every single Friday, every Friday since the conception and the inception in my brain about what I wanted to do and how I wanted to try to change this industry. So um, good, bad, and different. And it's really going to be fun to kind of go back because I have not listened to one of these since I recorded it. So like, oh, gosh, I remember that when that happened. So we're going to get to that in a little while, but I do want to take some time to talk more about about the app, I just think again, and I'm going to talk about Next Gen MedStaff's app because that's obviously the company that I'm CEO of. But I think, in in all fairness, and again, you guys are going to know transparency through me. I don't want to turn this into a commercial. Here's what I like about real apps that actually give you the right information. So I'm going to I'm going to talk a little about that here, and then we're going to end the episode, and we'll we'll continue on this stuff as we go. Here's what I want from an app. If I'm a traveler, I want to be able to see and compare. Well, first of all, let's back up. First and foremost, I want to be able to instantly get notified the second a job I may or may not be interested in based upon location, based upon pay, is available. And I want to be able to see that full breakdown of gross and taxable and tax-free income instantly when I look at my app. I don't want to be sold. I don't want to be convinced. I want to be able to, I'm a big boy and a big girl. I can say, hey, I'm interested in, let's say, I'd say I'm only interested in Denver, Colorado or Colorado positions. Let's say, I want to be able to be notified at 10 o'clock at night, Sunday at, at four in the afternoon. If a job in Denver comes in and I'm, let's say, an ER nurse, I want to see it and know about it and be able to not have to talk to anybody and be able to look and evaluate based upon true GSA rates, what this position is offering based upon the expected 36 or 40 hour work week. That's number one. But the but what's important to me and what I think is mostly important to you guys, and this is where I've changed a little bit, by the way. Pay is incredibly important. But I actually believe that that hasn't changed. My my belief in how important pay is has stayed the same. What's what started to make sense more sense to me as time has gone by is realizing how completely inefficient the systems in which you guys are working in, trying to struggle to beat your competition to a position that you want. You're relying upon somebody to call you, text you, email you, I mean, throw something out on an instant messenger, all the different avenues that your recruiters get to. You. You're counting on, on either one or multiple people to tell you quickly. Meanwhile, the companies that have apps, people are applying the second those jobs are coming in that they have a first chance to look at. Because if you're smart, you've got your notifications turned on your app. You don't have to open the app up to sit there and check to see 
what's available. It tells you. If you don't have a chime or a ding or notification, that means nothing in Colorado in my position for, let's say, ER, like for example, has come in. So I don't have to waste my time wondering or opening up an app or going back and doing searching like some other apps are. I don't like those apps. I don't like those platforms. I don't like those websites where you have to actively take time and go in and look. This should be a passive application notification to you that says here it is and you should trust that it's if there's nothing comes in from that particular company that means nothing news come in so that's number one it should be 24 hours a day seven days a week that's number two number three like i said you should not have to fill out a whole bunch of paperwork or jump through hoops you know with all the different things that most of these these uh, app places are asking you to do just to be able to see that transparent information on that rate on that information it should be free if the company is proud of what they're offering and they would put it up against anybody else's offer then why wouldn't they just give it to you right up front why would they make you register and jump through hoops it doesn't make sense because if you're interested, you're going to say, okay, you're going to jump through hoops to get in front of that job with that particular company who's paying more for it. it makes more sense, doesn't it? It is, it's got to be up to date. It's got to work 24 hours a day. The transparent side of this thing is, is, is incredibly important, in my opinion. Obviously, the pay rate has got to become higher. This is the last thing I'll, I'll say about it. We're going to end the episode because I don't, want to, I, I don't want to turn this into an infomercial, but I want you guys to start thinking a little bit more than I like working with somebody this works and everything else is it's really helping me it's it's not I'm telling you guys an app act an app agency if they're fully recruiterless now I get there's a lot of them out there that you can have this option or that option that means they haven't quite got yet they're not quite ready to let go which means they still are caring and supporting that huge financial burden of a recruiting team regardless of whether you're using it or not I have seen some apps where they're offering a little bit more money if you don't use a recruiter, and that's, that's I think, a better, much better concept. It's coming. It should pay more, and it should be significantly more. Now, one thing I'm going to tell everybody to kind of warn you on, if you're comparing two agencies, I don't care if it's you know, what agencies they are, and you're only seeing a $20 or $30 difference weekly, stop. That is a lot of money. If it's if it's if it's a hundred dollars or you know, around that figure, you're talking about over two dollars an hour, which doesn't seem like a lot. But if you know thirteen hundred dollars over course of the assignment, over five grand, just minimally on on you know. So we're talking about a thousand you know, a hundred bucks a week over fifty two weeks. That's fifty two hundred dollars last time I checked. Be careful when you're comparing companies, whether it's an app based company or not. Just in general, if you've got two offers and it doesn't seem like there's that much money, do the math. Figure out how much that is over the course of the assignment. Divide that by three, and you can figure out how much monthly disposable income. I guess if they're talking, you know, depending on if it's taxable or tax-free. But look at how much monthly disposable income one agency is offering over the other. Sometimes it's a car payment. It's your car that you just bought to be reliable to get you from assignment to assignment. Oftentimes, it's that big of a difference. Would you like this company to basically make your car payment for you, and this company won't? I know I would. So really do that math. Don't just ixnay a company that's saying, hmm, you know, it's only it's only 50, 60 bucks more a week and it's all taxable. It's a lot. That 40 to 45 dollars an hour, do that math, figure out if you work overtime, see if the company's paying you properly. Extend that math out in your own head and start to go with the company, in my opinion, that's paying that because it's gonna force those other companies to go, Well, I lost that traveler. I lost because of rate. Actually, the first thing that will happen, as you guys always know, I'll tell you, is they're, they're going to they're gonna match it, which is like, well, why didn't you match it the first time? That would make me so mad. If I had to sit there and point out someone else, it's like you're a used car salesman. Why would I just get that rate from the get-go? Why do I have to sit there and price shop? It's it's so yucky in our industry. It is it is just the, I mean, it's the part that makes me just ashamed to tell any nurse, any allied professional, whether they travel or not, what I do because I, I think the, the persona is, oh, you're, you're, yeah, that's it's a used car thing. I don't want to be that. Most people shouldn't, shouldn't end up being that way. It should be something that's completely upfront and here you go. Everything should work out the way it's supposed to be, and I don't know, but sometimes it doesn't. So, overall, that's the that's the general gist of it. The last thing I want to say about apps, and a lot of people are going to say this, is that when you get worried about the industry moving into app based only. Remember that good companies are not replacing customer service with an app, but I do believe at the very beginning of the process is when you least need a individual guiding you, if this makes sense. What I'm saying is as you, you know, get an offer 
and you accept an offer and you start going through credentialing, you start really ready to work for that company, you actually are working for that company, the human interaction should absolutely increase, especially once you say, yep, I'm ready to take this assignment. You should instantly feel like you are working for any other company. But that beginning stage where that salesmanship part comes out, the convincing, the, the pushing, the recruiting, the constant nagging, and hey, I got this job, all that stuff, that needs to go away. You don't need that. The only who needs that, a first-time traveler may think they need that, but they don't need it either. That needs to disappear. And that's what some of the good apps I'm seeing out there are doing. They're getting rid of that aspect because you guys know what you want. I use this example all the time. You guys know what assignments make sense and what assignments don't. There are times when a low-paying assignment a couple of hours away is a more attractive thing for you at this moment than a high-paying assignment is in a different state or across the country. You know that. And what's wonderful about any app that you're using that has the ability to be able to move fast like you, if you change your mind and say, you know what, I no longer want this. Now I actually do want to make more money. You press a couple of buttons, you change a few parameters, and you don't have to wait to get a hold of a recruiter or hope they get your message and hope they start changing their search. And, and it, you guys see where I'm going? Do you see how there isn't one thing? The only thing I've ever heard is someone saying, I just don't want to lose that human element. We shouldn't. You cannot have a company that does what we do and lose human element. And I know there's a few out there that have been there for a little while that made that mistake early on and tried that, and it's it, they learned that you can't, but you can get rid of it from the beginning. Okay, that's my, that's my. I feel like I'm, I'm I don't want to, I don't want to do that. I just want you guys to understand why I'm so passionate about this and why I know, I know where this industry is going. And if you haven't checked it out, I don't care. You don't have to use mine. Check out some of these apps. You're going to be amazed at how good they actually are and what you're going to find like any other thing that's that's any kind of technology that it is not nearly as cumbersome difficult or what are, i don't know the other word i'm looking for a lack of human uh element as you think i'll say this last thing first time i got into an uber i went oh my gosh i'm going to get in a stranger's car not a, not a, not a, not a licensed cabbie i'm going to they've got my i think they've got my credit card information on file I thought so at the time. I was like, that just seemed weird to me. After I got my first Uber ride, I'm like, this is nothing. This is nothing. This is this is wonderful. And it makes my life easier because now I don't necessarily have to rent a car every time I go somewhere. Or, you know, let's be frank. If you've had a cocktail or two and you're out with, you know, with your on a date with your spouse or whatever, get an Uber. Leave your car there. Be smart. Don't do anything like that. I mean, you shouldn't have one drink anymore. So there's so many avenues that will make it better. An app is the same way. It's, you guys are going to find that this is super easy, super wonderful. And again, I'm not plugging mine. Well, I kind of did, but I'm, I didn't mean to. I kind of didn't. But I, good apps, and there's tons that out there that are not good, are where we're heading. And those bad apps that are bad, that are just faster ways to... to get you in touch with somebody and, and pay you low, they're not going to be around too much longer. They're going to have to fix it. You guys are in control of how this industry moves and shifts. And I want to help you be one of the companies, one of, I hope, many companies that are leading the charge in changing and disrupting the way this industry works for the better. Whew. See why I took a break? I can get really worked on that. Join us on Travel Evolved Monday nights, Thursday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Join that group. I really appreciate it today. Hopefully it, it, this, this one came across good. I had a good time today. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you next time. Travel Evolved. <laughs>